G'day guys, Moose here. Welcome to our metal shop. And yes, believe it or not, I can actually do a little bit of metal work. Today is all about sheet metal. Cool dustpan. Awesome big toolbox. Adorable little in-between projects. Cute elephants. But today is all about this awesome little carry-all toolbox. What I love about this project in particular is it's a perfect gift, lasts forever, but awesome intro to marking out, uh, hand and power tools in the metal shop. We get to use the guillotine and our magna bend. Um, that's it, let's get into it. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple hot tips for the teachers. Plans are provided, they're on the link. With the plans, there is a lesson procedure for you guys to follow. Um, it's what I do here at school. And there's a design portfolio for your students to fill out. It works really well in conjunction with the project. And hot tip for teachers. If you can, we get our gouge kind of cut 600 by 600. It's the perfect size for me to get two exact toolboxes out of it with just a minimal waste. Um, I think that's it. Let's get into it. Oh, so, overall dimensions, that's one of them. That's the plan for the handle. And this is our important one, this is the base. Please be real fussy with the overall sizes, 300 by 460. I will get exactly what I need out of this as long as I don't make mistakes, so please be fussy. Oh, sorry, another hot tip for teachers is I actually get my kids here at school to draw this pan, plan up exactly on paper or cardboard first. I want them to make the mistakes on the paper, not on the sheet metal. So, let's get into it. Sharpies, Sharpies only. God's gift to metal work. 300. 300. Give yourself a line. While you're watching me, this is when you click the likes and subscribes. Uh, it means the world to me. And 460. I find it easy to do this straight away and actually double check their measurements are correct and then go over to the guillotine. I find it easy for them to mark it out once it's on a smaller piece. So, that gets me two bases. This is enough room for two handles. That's it, let's go to the guillotine. All right, the guillotine. It's one of those pieces of equipment that when you use it well and perfect and safe, it's the best. Um, God forbid anything goes wrong for you, but if it did, it's going to hurt. So please make sure you know 100% exactly what you're doing. And my hot tip. You see sheet metal workers um, do it. If I'm cutting across that line in particular, you'll see them, they'll tin snip it, tin snip just a little bit. They'll bend it down just a little bit, a little bit. And those two tiny edges help locate where you need to cut. Um, the guillotine, it's one of those kind of machines, it's, it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. I'll try my best to describe it. Um, this is where demonstrations in class are super important. Um, and the safety feature of it, there's not many, but once you've located where you're going to cut, when you push down, there's a safety bar here that actually comes down to hold your project still while you jump on the kind of the the breakdown here, the only way you get hurt is if your fingies somehow end up too close to that edge that comes down. Um, we don't want that. That'd be ouch. My rule is we don't hurt things, we can't grow back. So I'll change the camera angle um, and I'll explain it as best I can. It's a really good idea if you've got spare material to have a practice as well. I'm looking in through here and I can see that cutting edge. 
It's like a massive pair of scissors. I like where I've got it, I hang it on tight, and I push. And I should, should see your line still on your piece of metal. So that's not too bad. So it's hard to see, but that's the edge just there. You guys can watch this one in fast forward. All right, on our plans, you'll see that there's a little five millimeter safety edge. That's so that there's no sharp, sharp edges on our toolbox. It'll make sense a bit later on. But you're gonna see me mark out five millimeter edge around the whole thing to start with then I'm going to do these four lines in particular it's super important that your center rectangle is 230 by 170 please once you've drawn that double check it triple check it um, if you got that right the rest of it will just fall into place it'll be easy but I've had too many kids in the past who have gotten this a little bit out of center finish the whole thing and I end up with toolboxes that have, have short sides, don't meet in the corners, um, they'll have two different ends on them. Um, what I love about this project is they always come together and they all can still carry stuff. So, so it's always a win. Um, I will go through this kind of and explain it as I go. It's up to you if you follow along or if you're flying ahead and you Got no dramas with marking out, um, just skip me. I won't be offended at all, but um, let's get into it. So, five millimeter border first. Just mark your two five millimeter bits anywhere on your ruler, but give yourself two reference points on both sides. Sorry, all four sides. Oh, this stuff. Metho. If you make a mistake, no drums at all. Metho will get it off. And they're all just learning moments. Now I want that 230 in the center. I find it easiest to go 230. By coincidence, I have 230 left. Half of that is 115. 115. So 115 is my magic number. 115. My hot tip with marking out is if you've drawn something in your eye, if your eye thinks something's not quite right, I bet you 100% your eye is correct. Your eye will pick half a mil, a mil out every time. So now we want to do these lines. They're 170. So same deal. Come down 170 from the top edge. That leaves me 13. That gives me 65. Come down 65. Which makes sense because that is 5 mil. The side is 60. So come down 65. Give yourself the line. 
Be really fussy with your marking out. If you've done your measurements correctly, make sure you hold your ruler nice and tight. A little bit of pressure all the way. So, checking. 230, 170, 115, 115, 65s, 65s. So I trust that that is in the center. All right, let's do our little safety edges. Sorry, they're the safety tabs. So in the corner, the tabs that we attach later on with the rivet guns, they're one centimeter. Uh, one centimeter is the minimum. If they're a little bit bigger, that wouldn't matter at all. So I'll go centimeter, centimeter, centimeter. centimeter. So with this line, I just need it there, there. Don't give yourself too many lines. Don't give, don't give yourself more information than you need. Or it just gets confusing. Now this is when a square comes in handy. Because I want these tabs to be on the 45. And this tab, make sure it goes through the corner there. Go through that corner, right on the intersection. It's not there, it's right there. Please invest in some sharpness. Love it, like the tabs. Now we're going to draw the two ends. So, easiest way to explain it is the two sides are 60 mil, 60, 60 mil, six centimeters high. Same. So I need to go from there up, I need that to be 60. If you get it wrong, I end up with corners that don't match. So, 60. 60. 60. Now, I want to draw the ends. So the easiest way to do it is come down to that five mil line, find the center, and go from there, left and right. The width of it is 40. So the width of it here is 40, so we're going to go 20 each way. So the easiest way to do that is spin it, find the center, which is 15, then go 20 each way. Then all you're doing is going up from intersection to intersection. your five and five because this needs a safety edge while you're here that's coming off, that's coming out, that comes out, that little bit comes out. Please make sure it makes sense what's coming off. Same deal, 60, oh, sorry. find the center, 150, 20 and 20. Make 
match up your lines. Safety edge is 5 mil, 5 mil. So scribble what's coming off. That little bit, that little bit. So that is marked out, ready to go. If you're one of my kids at school, make sure your name's on it. Done, let's do the handle. All right, now with the handles. Uh, same deal, I'm gonna do the overall dimensions so I can guillotine off what I don't want and then we'll mark it out properly. So the whole thing overall is 280. by 100. I'll be back. So, same deal. That's my five mil edge, five mil safety edge. I'm gonna draw those first, then I'm gonna do the two tabs. Twenty five mil in from the edge, from that safety edge. Draw the line the whole length. So from the ends, same deal, it's 25, 25. So now I do have to draw these little tabs. These four little tabs is, help, is what will help us attach it later on. We want them to be a centimeter as well. But make sure you draw them in the right spot. Sometimes I have the kids draw them here. So, centimeter, centimeter. One, one. So I only need little lines. Little lines. And now that's square. So when you do your square, make sure you're hitting 
we want to go through through that intersection and hit that. I'll do it so you can see it. So, that. And that guy. So that's what we're keeping. This is what we don't want. So make sure you get that right. We're keeping the tabs on the side, not here. Nice job. If you got to that point and didn't need to use your metho, congrats, awesome work. Uh, must be smoker. When we get back, it's all gonna be a little bit more on the guillotine and the tin snips. I'll show you a couple different types. If you haven't done it, make sure you subscribe. I don't want you to miss out. All right, you've earned it. It is dad joke time. What did the elephant do when he kicked his toe? Called a tow truck. <laughs> I got another bad one. Why did all the elephants get kicked out of their swimming pool? Because all their trunks kept coming down. <laughs> all right, I'm doing smoke -o. All right, tin snips. Sorry, welcome back. I like these guys, traditional tin snips. I like them because they've got like a really nice long reach, works well for these projects. Um, you do have to be nice and strong to use them. You can get these aviation snips. Um, I use these if I've got to do really fine kind of intricate work and I don't need to make nice long cuts. Um, these work really well. And they do come in in a left and a right handed version. So. For you lefties out there, you can get a pair for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to trim these up. You can just watch it and fast forward. I am going to go back to the guillotine because I usually guillotine off whatever I can. So I can take the corners off this, then to go snip, snip. But this one in particular, because it is quite long, that safety edge we drew at the top, I've got it marked in a red pen. I'm going to cut that whole thing off on the guillotine so I can just cut out this little bit here. Sorry, I hope you can see. So I just have to cut that little bit out, not the whole thing. Um, that's it. You guys can rock out. So, we've taken the corners off. Please check you're cutting out the right bits. My hot tip using these guys as well any of the tin snips is, have the end of it lined up with where exactly where you want to stop, the exact corner. Just treat them like big heavy duty scissors. And snip the little sharp bit off. It's super important in both parts, they get really nice sharp corners. Now, unlike scissors, once I've started cutting, let's say I want to follow that line, 
from a little bit out or a little bit in, you, you, you can't fix it. So make sure you line them up nice and straight where you want to go. And make sure you have the end of it finishing where you want. Right on that corner. show you one up close so it's really important you get that corner perfect if you don't get it perfect you end up with real daggy bottom corners you guys can rock out again all right guys now we're lucky enough here at school to have a magna bed. It is the best. If you've got one, please make sure you're taking advantage of it. You can do so many things with them. It's, it's the best, honest. Um, you might just have a sheet metal folder. Works just as well, just a smidge slower. So we'll get into it. I will film a little bit from this side. Then I'll film a little bit from the front side and I'll show you a couple things on how to use them. Um, I think that's it, let's go. To start with, I'm gonna bend all the safety edges. Now, the nicest way to do it is to kind of do it twice. You'll see on the, on the plate, I've got a 90 degree straight edge and I've got a 45. Use a 45 first. So you gotta line it up with your line and you gotta line it up with the back edge of where it folds. So I'm looking at kind of this edge, not that edge. Press the on button, it turns the whole thing into a magnet. Bam. Until it hits that 45. Then I want you to move that back a bit. Now we're going to flatten it, but do it like this. So turn it back on. Push this all the way. Then press the stop button. Now I get a nice safety edge that I don't have to bash with a hammer. So, let's do all the rest, you guys rock out. Now that you've done all the safety edges, and you might have noticed when I had to grab the bigger, oh, the bigger clamp at the back, sometimes for whatever reason, if you don't get the purchase you want, sometimes you need a bit more, bit more magnet, a bit more, a bit more strength going through the system to get the folds right. Now that we've done all the safety edges, now it's we're going to fold them all up so we kind of get our complete shape but it has to be done in a certain order. The key is you've got to make sure that all our safety edges that we want that, that are going to help us attach, they all end up on the inside of the box. I hope you can see. So we, our tabs end up on the inside, inside, and the handle on the inside. Um, It'll make sense when I start folding, but please make sure if all you remember is that they in, need to be on the inside.
And now because we want them on the them to be straight up and down, use the flat edge, the 90, the 90 degree. Same deal, line it up where you need it. Line that up, line that up. On the 90. Be fussy when you're line, when you're lining up. You took, you took your time to draw it out. Make sure it's perfect. Now my hot tip is, we need to fold the sides in now. They've got to come in. So if we don't tweak our tabs a tiny bit, it's going to crash into the sides. So I'm going to grab my pliers and just tweak them a little, little, to make sure that they go inside the box. You've only got to tweak the bottom edge of it. You don't need the whole thing. And you need to use magnets that, a combination that will fit inside. So they both fit inside. I've got a little room on the two outside edges for my tabs to fit in and not smash into our plates. Do it nice and slow so you can watch. Make sure nothing's crashing into anything I don't want. And that'll work. Don't worry about any of the gaps yet. When we start putting it together and riveting it, riveting it together, it's going to look schmick. Got a hand. Same deal, we've got to bend this one. Hot tip is just move this forward and bend that again. Kids get lost when they when they flip it around and they can't get their, their plates to fit in. So this is my hot tip. So same deal, I need these to be in a little bit so I can fold that in. With a bit of luck your magnet bend's got a little guy. So, because I'm going slowly, I can see that that's not quite, that, I haven't bent that in far enough yet. Now 
Let's see what, see what this side's going to do. So that one worked well. I'm going to quickly go do it. So you've got to bang the tabs flat, bang everything flat and square. Flat and square on the inside. I'm going to do the same on this one. All right, we're so close to the end, you guys are doing great. Last bit is we're going to pop rivet our corners and then pop rivet our handle in. So for some of you, might be a, this might be your intro to using pop rivet guns and the cordless drill. If you are new to the cordless drill in particular, I have popped a video up. It's a short five minute video on just some safety tips and how to use a cordless drill and get all the advantages out of them. So, go enough, it's not gonna take you long. From now on, I'll assume you know how to use it. But, and I'm gonna explain what pop rivets do as well, so. I'm going to zoom down and we're going to get into it. It's kind of hard to describe, but the pop rivet, it's a shank and a sleeve with a tiny ball on the end of it. When the pop rivet gun grabs onto the shank, it pulls it through the sleeve that way until it kind of pops. And what you're left with is the ball, a scrunched up sleeve, and they will look like that. Easy to use, <laughs> harder to explain. Because I'm a bit, I don't know, a bit wide, a bit differently, everything's got to be super neat. So I will actually mark out exactly where I want my rivets to go. So I want it all to be nice and uniform. Make sure where you're marking out, you're still going to hit the tabs on the inside. And we're going to put in two in each. So I want the bottom ones to go about there. Checking that it's going to hit the tab there and there. There, there. And the top one's going to go about here. If you're in my class, you, you're going to mark them out. So I'm going to check if it's not perfect. Next bit is. Vice grips, I'll be back in two. I told you it'd only be two. So vice grips, how they work. First thing, make sure, I'm gonna put my vice grips on, make sure the corner looks good. I don't wanna see it outside, I don't want it inside. So line it up where it's gonna look good, where you're happy, and you're gonna clamp both bits of material together. So, this is set a bit too tight. I can't squeeze it and snap it on, so I've got to back it off a little bit. Perfect. It's the opposite. If it's backed out too far, and when you go to clamp it, it's not doing anything, it means you've got to tweed, tighten it in a smidge. A smidge is my technical term. A smidge more. So line up the corner. Perfect. So I like where that is. Put in our bits. These little double-ended kind of, they're kind of purpose-made rivet drill bits, double-ended, they're the best. Now, drilling. Keep your drill nice and upright, obviously, but try to keep everything close to your body. Makes it a bit easier and you can put some body weight behind it. There's no tricks, it's just practice, body weight, 
nice and upright. If you're not upright, if you're, um, if it feels like you're a little bit wandering around, it's because you're not upright enough. And if it's taking forever to drill through, you just need a little bit more oomph, or it might be just a dead, you might have a dull drill bit. Pop rivets. Now it's important, you put the pop rivet all the way to the, all, as far as you can. Use your finger to hold it there. Make sure it's, everything's pushed down. Down, give it a squeeze all the way down as far as you can. Let the handle out all the way. Again. So it'll be two or three squeezes, and then you get this, the shank that busts off, that's what you get left. So do them both while the vice grips are set. All the way down. So that's what we want. Nice corner, nicely lined up, pop rivets, and they look good on the inside too. I hope you can see it. All right, you guys rock out, I'll finish it. Hot tip, if you put a rivet in somewhere and you don't like it and you've got to get rid of it, you just use the same drill bit, you drill it straight through the centre. And you'll get the daggy bit of the, drill, uh, the rivet there, and the ball part will pop out on the inside. And you can simply chuck another one. That's if you've made a mistake. Now, this one's, because there's not much tab on the inside, it's kind of, you can't really clamp it. So make sure you fold them as flat as you can get them and just drill. But again, I would make my marks too.
Now, we're going to attach the handle. So, I reckon the easiest way to do it is to line up the top with just under your lip, your safety edge lip, and we're going to vice grip it on. So, do it on the, off the edge of the bench. Worry about one side for now. Same deal, give yourself some guidelines. I'm drilling close to my body. Okay, last one. Clean your lines off you don't want. Leave my name on it. I'll leave my love heart in there. Everyone needs a bit of love. Now last bit. If there's any daggy bits that your hands don't love, tiny bit on the corners, tiny bit maybe there. Um, grab a file and a tiny hammer. Congrats guys on finishing your new carry all toolbox. Great job. Um, I love that we got to learn new skills. I introduced you guys to some new, um, new equipment and you get to take home a cool project. So that's a win-win. Um, please click the like, subscribe. I don't want you guys to miss out on anything. From my family to yours, I really appreciate the love. So uh, send me a comment, tell me how you went. Send me some pictures through your emails. Um, I think that's it. Go on, get down the shop, buy yourself some new tools. All right, peace and love. Sorry, forgot to mention, if you love this toolbox, this one's very cool. I'm gonna chuck a link up now, and I'll teach you how to make that one. All right, get out of here.
G'day guys, Luce here, and welcome to a My Metal Shop. I shouldn't say mine, it is the school's. Dad to Dad joke time. Sim. Wait. Now I'm gonna use some hand tools. Plug for me. Sorry, it sounds, it sounds silly. In. Sorry, just talking rubbish.